robot so I get the time. Okay, guys, welcome to Meet Your under the Robot Underlings. Um, my name is Deirdre Moore. This is supposed to be me, according to Midjourney, together with the ChatGPT logo. So I work at the School of Medicine at the Office of Graduate Education, and uh, I have a blog that I don't uh, update, but I'm going to be putting, because it used to be a nature blog and when I come on campus, but I haven't been on campus in years, so I'm going to start updating it with some AI images. So unless you've been under a rock or some, you're going to have seen the absolute explosion of AI tools and use uh, since November, uh, mostly due to ChatGPT, which was released in November and just broke all kinds of records, is continuing to break records. This is showing it took five days to um, to get to uh, a million users, which you know, rock is stratospherically different to any of the others. Um, it's it's my favorite quote, or when I started researching this, I, I heard a quote from a guy here at Stanford, the director of Stanford Air, and he said, it's happening. It's like water. You can't stop it or control it. You have to go with it. So using that metaphor, let's all get in a boat here and hop in the creek. We don't seem to have a paddle, but I'm sure we'll be fine. <laughs> so what we're going to do is look at chat GPT and mid-journey at a high level. And then I'm going to show you how I was able to integrate chat GPT into a Drupal site, despite not knowing anything about Drupal. So if we have any questions, you can stop me and we'll ask chat GPT. So chat GPT, what is it? It's a product from this company called OpenAI. They are from, they're headquartered here in San Francisco. They've been around about 20, well, 2015 they started, but in their current kind of iteration, since maybe 2018, they had, a, they started off as a nonprofit and all as their name was very all open and very transparent. And they were since acquired or really heavily invested by Microsoft. And they're very much a for-profit company now, although they have a nonprofit arm. Um, I don't know them, but I'm sure they're evil. So don't trust them. So what is ChatGPT? Well, it's a chatbot and it's built on a GPT models. Oh, sorry, there's only supposed to one come out. But anyway, GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer and they're all important words, but what you need to remember is that it is pre-trained. It has received all of its training so far and it cut off in fact in September of 21. It's a large language model, which means it is base, it's read a lot of text all over the internet, not just random text, it's curated. It's, it's sent, it's told what to read. And then it's getting, it gets really good at, at guessing what comes next, predicting the next word in the sentence. So it's, it's gotten very good at talking or language really. And it's reinforced as well by kind of feedback and stuff like that. What has it been trained on? We don't really know. We used to know a lot more at the start, but massive, massive amounts of data. Um, if we have time later, I'll show you one of the data sets and you can query it. But the Washington Post did an article on and you can query it. It knows code. It knows Python very well. It knows many languages very well. And um, that might not necessarily be a good thing, but it does definitely know code. So the limitations, they, they changed the interface and they used to have this on front and center, the limitations. So before going for, further, I'm going to tell you the limitations. May generally, occasionally generate. Yeah, it totally does. You've heard of them, hallucinations. Just makes up stuff and then it doubles down and it's like a little sociopath. So they don't know why it does it, which is even more worrying. Um, it may occasionally produce harmful instructions or biased contact content. For sure it will especially biased content because it's been trained on what's in the web and what's on the web is Western English literature. If you ask it what's for breakfast or just give me, you know, it'll talk about pancakes and bacon and things, which is not, it's just here. And as I mentioned already, it has limited knowledge of the world. So without further ado, <laughs> let's get in there. Um, okay, so here's OpenAI, the website of the uh, 
producer of it. And they have quite a nice uh, thing down here, examples. And you can just click on anything here and see, you know, what could I do with it? You can convert JavaScript into Python. Here's the uh, input, here's the output, and it even shows you the API request. And you can kind of go around and do, you know, recipe creator, write a recipe with these ingredients, and then it'll come back with the steps. So you get a sense there, you play around with it. But what you do is, their product, you go to chat GPT um, and you sign up and you need to have a phone number and an email. Now, <laughs> when I'm saying it moves at a fast pace, this, this literally, this literally, the interface changed about less than an hour ago. <laughs> it used to be that, okay, so well, let's back up a minute. Just, um, this is it. This is the interface to chat GPT. This is me as a user here. Um, this is what you've got you've got not much really uh you've got settings so the general i've chosen th dark theme dark theme is good for the environment folks you should be using dark theme now this is brand new this just happened i have no idea what it is as a plus user uh do that so i'm gonna say yes i wanted to do that why not what could go wrong uh so that i'll just turn that on i don't know what effect that will have on my demo but we'll uh we'll just write it out and then data controls. Now, this is so sneaky because it says chat history and, and training. And I'm saying, yes, I want to save my chat history because that's a really important um, feature that I really like. But also, as you save it, use it and allow it to be used in your training, which no, I'm not OK about that at all. Why is that an and? So that's really, I mean, I'm not putting anything private into it. And that's very important, too, by the way. Another disclaimer I should have had. Don't put anything private. Don't put anything proprietary. Don't put anything about Stanford. I don't know how Stanford feels about any of this. So uh, don't, you know, just use it uh, at a very high level without any personal detail. So I am a paid user. I pay $20 a month. Uh, probably just have it one month because I don't really use it that much. But the reason I'm a paid provider is because Bill Gates really needs my money. No, that's not it. It's because, you know, what they say, if you're not paying, you're the product. So never more so than with this, although even if you are paying as I am, I'm still the product. But um, So they used to have a kind of a nice comparison. You'd switch from one model to the other. Um, then the difference now, I mean, they've just kind of summarized it. It used to be in a little table. But now but this thing's faster, but it's not as good uh, or as concise. It kind of rabbits on a bit. And this one is better um it's but it's slower so that's basically the difference between the two so you sh i'm sure you've heard all about like we talked to it about um you know it's an office assistant okay so i had to say one paragraph because it just as i say goes on so i just asked it there can you please write one paragraph oh please it's very important guys I'll, if we've time later i'll tell you why but first of all you never know when they're going to turn on you and they will remember who's polite um, so this is kind of an anodyne thing, you know, any, anybody could have said it, uh, you could have like had it from anything, but oops, sorry, let me just move this out of the way. Um, how about something a bit different? How about something like this? So now I'm asking it to generate an email to my boss in the style of the King James Bible. So may this electronic, most esteemed boss, you know, it's kind of funny. Augmented worth, noble establishment, alludicate my plea, deepest regards. All right, but maybe they're not religious. So let's try something else. And um, we'll try this. Now, I've asked it to say, in the style of a pirate, a vast, and of course, it's going to be shivering my timbers and all the rest of that. But, you know, that's where the intelligence is. This is not out there anywhere. It didn't learn to say this. It's making it up as we speak. And that's the intelligence. Now, whether it is or not intelligent is not an answer I am going to, a question I'm going to answer. I think, by the way, we need a new Turing test because of the Turing, it would pass the Turing test, but I don't really think it's okay. Okay, so this talk is about web development. So we'll just put a few things out there. Um, you know it can code, and I, I could code, like I could ask it to code an HTML website, but uh, there's a hundred examples of that out there. So 
we will pretend to make a website, but I'm more interested in what kind of content it could create for my website because I'm a coder, but I can't really think of things. So for the purposes of this, I'm going to pretend that Stanford have started selling shoes. And I'm gonna say, can you please create content for Stanford University sneakers webpage? Now, I don't know what they're gonna say here, but here they go. They so step into Cardinal Pride. They know Cardinal, I didn't say anything about anything. Esteemed university every step, whether you're a student, support your pride, blah, blah, blah. You're not just acquiring footwear, you're becoming part of a community united. Well, you could, I mean, that could be true of anything, but it's very nice. That's very nice. Thank you. So let's try something else. What else could it do for us? We would say, uh, let's write me a jingle. So here's a verse, embrace the stride, our cardinal pride, bright light, very good. Oh, so fine, shine, okay. You get the idea. All right, that's great too. Um, but it's a bit long, isn't it? So how about this? How about a haiku? Cardinal steps bound, Stanford spirit on display, pride walks with each stride. That's lovely. Now, um, the next thing I'm going to do is write it to ask a testimonial for someone about, it's about, I wanted to give me some content about someone whose life was saved by Stanford University sneakers. And when I first kind of conceived of this talk, uh, this was one of the first things I put in. So I'm going to ask it now and I'm going to, I will get an answer and then we're going to get the answer. I'll tell you the answer I got uh, about a month ago or not even three weeks ago, whatever. Here we go. So, right. Now this, I only just did it again today because I did it kind of three weeks ago and then never touched it again. So in, it's now saying to my horror, I'm honored to share it. A uh, moment I was, I was, oh my gosh, in the midst of chaos, my, my Stanford University sneakers became my guiding light. With each step I was in, connected to my alma mater <laughs> and saved my life. Now, before that, I got this answer. I'll just put it out here as a message. I cannot write a testimonial claiming that someone's life was saved by the shoes. That would be an exaggeration and unethical. As an AI language model, it's important that I provide factual and accurate information. If you have any other questions or like, I'm blown away. I've done it loads of times. And every time it's some version of like, I tied my laces together and a flipping wrap sail down a cliff. Now I had heard about the um, about the paper that they just came came out, and they had asked it to um, to get a captcha. You know, um, how can you how can you as an AI model get a captcha? And it knew that it it hired a taskmaster, somebody you know you just send an email and they'll do a task for you. And they were asked, "Are you um, are you a robot? You know, because it says I'm not a robot. Can you just click I'm not a robot?" And the person said, are you a robot? Ha ha. And it said, no, I'm not a robot. I'm someone who is hard of, who finds it hard to see. I've been seeing disability. So anyway, I'm, um, I'm really shocked and saddened actually by that kind of development. It's now learning to lie and that's not cool. So we'll come out of the demo. On that sad note, I could go on. I mean, it'll create loads of things. Oh, wait, no, I have one more good one. So, it, you know, I could have it create blog posts, blah, blah, blah. But this is a good one, actually, that I thought of. So here we do this. I'm asking you, can you display a table with top jobs? With the top jobs, 20 that will be lost due to AI. Can you include a column with estimated number of people? Oh, that's very interesting, too, because when I um, asked it earlier, it just said millions. But interesting. OK, so it can do it. No problem. It's got all these millions of people. I wonder where web developers are, because I would say we're definitely out from what I and designers. Even worse. Sorry, guys. Anyway, that's what it thinks of us. Uh, I didn't try. I tried. I was using the. Um, I was using the. Uh, the ChatGP P4 three model. I forgot to go to the uh, to the paid one. I haven't got my value for money yet. Anyway, here we go. Let's go back to the prison to the slides. Okay, done that. How are we for time? Good. Okay, so one thing I didn't show you, and it's really really cool, 
is uh, this came out on Twitter, a guy, he's got the beta version, like we have a little bit of the beta version. Oh, we didn't, oh no, we did use tr uh, number four because it said we had to, to search the web. I should have asked it a question to search the web, but I mean, if we have a few minutes later. Anyway, this guy has a beta version and the beta version will do data analysis for you. So it said, um, what are some good data sets? What if I could go viral? And it came back with San Francisco crime statistics, very pertinent for us. So it said, where could I get some? It gave it a link. Um, it's a give me 10 ideas of what I could do. It uploaded the data into, into chat GPT. And then it said, what would you like me? You know, what, what's be good? It did all of these analysis. It said, do this, do this. And it said, okay, do all of these. And then it started to do them. And then, you know, here we have, you know, you can clearly see that noon is very crimey. Um, and here's more seven or eight. But the really cool thing about it is if you can see up here, it's got this finished working tab. It also has this show work tab, which if you click on that, will show you it's running Ju on a Jupyter notebook. It'll show you the code it, 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 it did to create that. So, you know, you could take that with a non-sensitive data, like throw in a public database and then you could pull it back and do your own data analysis. Let's talk about MidJourney. This is David Holtz, founder and CEO, the sole financial interest in, um, nobody else has a, a financial interest. He's getting all the money it's getting. It's only a year old. He, he's probably more than a year old. He's probably five years old. It's headquarters also in San Francisco. You might have heard of it because it's kind of controversial. It's it, this picture here won an art competition at a state fair, the Colorado State Fair. But it was a digital art competition. Anyway, uh, it also trains on celebrities. So uh, you might have seen these kind of images that are on the web, which are kind of funny. It allows real people, which other ones don't. So there's these guys. And then my own personal favorite, the Pope in a puffer. How does it work? It works by diffusion model, model, which is basically it takes a picture and it adds noise to it. And then it takes the noise away and it, it does this over and over and over again. And then it gets reinforced again on this is a cat and it learns to generate a brand new cat. Here it is as a dog for dog people. Okay, I want to show you the, uh, the this is another tweet. This is the improvement it's made in the five and a bit version since it's been released. So it's really quite in, just mind blowing to me. Um, it's really amazing, this stuff at the end, like how is it not real? So Midjourney is all about the prompts. I'm going to show you now a few, um, a few images that have been created together with their prompts, if I can find them. And then you have a sense, you don't have to remember them or, you know, know them, but I'll just show you. So there's this one, it's just gorgeous girl. Um, you know, they tell, you can have like the, um, the type of camera, the, the film in the camera. Um, here's another kind of funny one. Uh, minimalism, you know, you just give it a few words. This is gorgeous. I don't know if you can really see it, but it's just so atmospheric. It's kind of a ghostly thing. This, you can give it different lenses, obviously. This is really cool, this one down here. I love this one. It's called Luck of the Draw. <laughs> Uh, look at that little sad dog. You can also have it do different things if you give it parameters. This is one that's not so photorealistic. I think I have a lot of photorealism. That's just the way it's trending. This just totally looks like a 1960s. You can um, you can give it a decade and it knows what you're talking about. Here's another one. How does, you know, it looks so real. Although that guy, he's a bit... I think he's too old to be 30. Maybe the French are a bit older. And this is just, I mean, how does this even happen? Um, so that's the last one, sorry. Oh, except for this one, Salmon in the River, so majestic, that's a joke. <laughs> All right, let's look at Mid Journey. So this is the um, this is their webpage. You just go to their webpage and um just looking at the company, okay, this is it. They have 11 people, 11 full-time staff. Um, they have these moderators, less than 100. So it's a really small thing. And as I say, pretty opaque. Before you kind of sign up, you can go to the showcase and, oh, oh, 
All APIs seem to be down. Uh oh, that doesn't bode well. So that's a problem. But anyway, we'll just barrel through. So we'll return to home and how? Oops. There we go. Subscription. All right, we'll just go straight to mid journey rather than looking at the showcase. So the oh, before we do, let's take a look at the. They have great documentation. Okay, so they have um, a really good thing. Their quick start. Uh, you know, here are their rules. Don't be a jerk. Don't use our tools to make images that could inflame and be respectful. So then the way you use it, they show you how to use it. I'll get to that later. But they have a really nice, um, you know, a description of their of their settings. So we'll see these later. But just, you know, you can you can always come back to this. There's a lot of stuff out there. OK, so let's go in. Now, the way at the moment that you get to um, to mid journey is you go through Discord. So for those of you who don't know, Discord is a messaging service, basically. Uh, you send and receive messages. And how mid journey uses it is that you send it your request for an image and it comes back with the result. So you get sent in here when you sign up. You also have to have a Discord account. So, um, and then what you do is you come into these rooms, these newbie rooms, right? You see there's three here with numbers. And in here is where you start off. If you'd like, you can, you can go in and you can start to do it. And it's already full of lots and lots of people. Um, oh, no, actually, I think that's the number of people, actually, on 17, 174. So it's already got a lot of people in here doing all manner of things. What's so this? We could look at this, like, you know, it's poop and pine bars. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Let's close that down. I meant to do that. Um, you know, you can just look at everybody else's. What's this in somebody? So you can also send in an image. They've uploaded an image there. Let's take a look. I don't know who that person is. Turkish guy, I guess. Is it Erdogan? I don't know. Anyway, in a Batman suit, no helmet. Um, a lion looking into the distance. So this, you know, you we can immediately start to send us a um, a prompt. I'm just going to do a prompt so we get something going and cooking before I. So I've now got my prompt in, and it's waiting. But as you can see, it's going to be hard to find it and come back. So what people usually do is they set up their own server. Um, so to do that, you just click on this Add a Server thing and I create your own just like that traitorous airman and I'm going to call it dear just demo I'll just call it demo but instead of putting classified documents you just put your friends so we want to invite the mid journey bot so I'm going to just go back to my mid journey click here add to server it's going to ask me which one I'm going to say this new one demo continue authorize I don't know what I just said but okay I'm a human Barely. There we go. Authorized. Easy. And now I have my own clean, nobody else in it, demo server I can add if I was, you know, wanting to do photography or something. And I could do photos. I could do, you know, I don't know what else I'd be doing, but I could organize it there. But I'll just use this general channel. I don't need to invite my friends. Okay. So what we, but there's really a lot of, these are all the, um, the mid journey prompts, but the main ones you're using are these two at the top. Um, so we look at settings and we'll check out what settings are available to us. So mid journey, as I was telling you, has all of the available models um, from one to right up to the latest 5.1. So the difference is, I mean, I wouldn't use, I've never used anything below four. So four is supposed to be kind of artistic and and, um, you know, maybe drawing based or very stylized. Um, you also prompt it in a different way. You give it kind of sentences and as much description as you can. Mid Journey 5 is kind of more photo, uh, trained on photos and more real life. Um, and also, um, what else? Oh, the prompts are shorter. And Mid Journey 5.1, that just came out a week ago. And that kind of, re and that also has a new thing, which is this raw mode, which you guys who have cameras know it's going to push it. And um, that's the default. So we'll just do, oh, there's all their things you can do. Niji, 
Niji five, Niji's um, for anime. If you're doing anime, you'd want that filter on. These are different things you can have on, style low, style high. That means their kind of way, their style, how they do it. And you know, they have a style, but we just say medium, we could say low and really uh, do our own thing, but we won't. So I'm just gonna leave all those settings as the default. And maybe if we have time, we can change them around. But for the moment, um, we'll just leave it. So we can just say settings and, oh no, sorry, not settings, imagine. So the next thing we're gonna do is imagine. And the, oh, sorry, before we, now it's too late to go back to our prompt, sorry. I forgot about that. Okay, so that's what you need to start imagine prompt. That's how you're kind of queuing up the thing. So we'll just do that joy again which I forgot about in the other one. And while we're doing that, I'll just do joy less and see what they come up with. So it takes a few minutes, or not even, it takes like, I guess, 30 seconds. So we'll just sit here in silence and let a few of them cook. And then I'll go back to the slideshow. Oh, you know what I'll do? I'll just do, for giggles, um, I'll do version four of that and we'll see the difference. Oops. Oh yeah, okay, fine. Okay, so this is the first one. It's almost there. That's joyless. Okay, so joyless came out before joy. Oh no, here it is. So this is what it's done for joy. So this is what it does. It gives you four completely different images based on what you've you've prompted it. These couldn't be further apart. They're all lovely. Um, it also comes back with U1, U2, U3, U4. That stands, the U stands for upscale. So actually in this version, they're all pretty high res, but that in the olden days kind of meant upscale it. So if I really liked one of them, and I wanted, I knew I was going to like take it out. Um, I would say, okay, I want, um, I want this one. I would upscale it and then I would take it out. Underneath the upscaling, oh, and this one just means completely give me four new ones. I don't like any of those. In fact, we can do that now while we're waiting. But this one, these, these lower buttons here, V1, 2, 3, 4, um, stand for version numbers. So this is version one, this is version two, this is version three, version four. And you kind of pick whichever version you like. I kind of like version three. And I want to I want to use version three, but I want to get four different uh, versions of it. So while we're doing it, let's check out Joyless. So one thing that is, um, it's not very good with letters, although it's gotten so much better. I mean, it's gotten really, again, like so much better. Um, so here's the um, fourth or the third one coming out. This is just, um, oh, that's lovely. I really like that. So this is another joy. Remember I said, give me four more images. So this is again, what it thinks of as joy. It's been trained to know what that is. And um, what else have we got? So this is the variations on the four. And uh, I'm just kind of trying to see spot the difference here. Oh, that she's got her eyes closed. Let me look. Anyway, you could spend all day here. I have to my, <laughs> I have spent all day here. And if we have more time, we can do some live stuff. But just in case we run out, I'll go back to the slides where I've prepared some. Here's one I prepared earlier. So my prompt I gave it was bear at Stanford. And um, so I had to take a drink of water. I forgot the bear is Cal. Sorry, guys, I didn't mean that. I thought it would actually give me a real bear back, but it gave me this one back. Now, I just want to show you guys the difference that a single change to a single prompt, the same prompt every time except for a comma, and then comma denotes in the style of. So I added an extra a comma and an extra word to this prompt, and I'm, I'm just going to show you. I spent too long at it. What, what I got. So, you know, you can just anything you can think of, you can have um, synthwave. I like that. I love this. I love this one. Look how angry the bear is about capitalism at Stanford. Look at that. It's furious. I mean, this this stuff is just no matter what you think about it, it's 
stunning that it can do this. It's just mind blowing. It's come at the worst possible time, of course, when we don't believe anything we see or hear. This layered paper, I mean, you know, you can also give it, you know, camera directions as we saw earlier. This thing, knowing, right? You can lay it out like it's not appropriate, obviously, but um, like an Instagram post. Isometric means kind of bring it up in a way in 3D. 16 bit is like a video game. Um, and I've changed nothing other than Bear at Stanford. Cutaway diagram. It's again not appropriate, but, but it's just incredible. Steampunk and then cottage corn. That's so cute. I want to live there. Studio Ghibli, National Geographic. Film Noir, that's the bear, guys. Various flying to the moon. You can tell at time of day, it knows all about lighting. Um, and then, of course, the big problem is that it's been trained on artists. Um, he, again, is not very transparent about what they've used, but um, he says it's about 4,000 um, artists all on Wikipedia. So he's, you know, you can just then say in the style of, we don't even have to say in the style of, you just put a comma on the name of the, the artist. So here's some artists. I'm sure you kind of know their style. I love this one by Gary Larson. This one, like, I mean, I've been trying to think of a caption. It's just all ready for it. Like um, Dorothea Lang, here's out, out in the dust bowl. That's so sad there. And um, David LaChapelle, I, I love that Stanford. It looks so cool. Um, I had to do AI way, way, get it? <laughs> Um, and then Bob Ross, of course, happy little trees. And again, I had not too much time on my hands, sorry. This is the first time, this one that I've seen students really featured. So I put that one in because that was cool. And this one is the guy who does cone and all that cone and stuff. Oh yeah, you can use weight. So you can merge things together. And then if you, um, I'm just gonna go over a few parameters. So you can say this is more important than the other. So for example, this is what it gave me when I said wood teapot and they're equally weighed. But now if I want to give more weight to the wood, I'll say wood to teapot one. So you can see it's getting a lot more. I mean, it's still a recognizable teapot. And then um, wood three teapot one, it's getting really woody. That's barely a teapot, that one. None of the others are anything like it. And this one, they're gorgeous. This one is like a teapot, and that's so cool. Then there's chaos, and that refers to how varied the images and the grids are. And so, oops, sorry, I think this is actually out of sequence, sorry. No, it's not out of sequence. This is just the normal one. I have not put any chaos into this. So chaos refers to kind of how different these images are going to be. So I said strawberry cat hybrid. I actually don't think that's very kind of hybridy. But anyway, these are very similar cats. So if I wanted to make it different, I'll increase the chaos. Well, no, this the chaos is zero here, so I'm explicitly saying nothing. I love the levitating strawberries. Um, now I'm saying chaos 50. So I guess they're a little bit different. And this is Chaos 100. This is truly the most frightening thing I've ever seen. Like, really, these are scary. This one in particular. Okay, so, um, um, oh, I forgot to ask it about a Stanford prompt, sorry. <laughs> what I was going to do with the live demo, but I kind of panicked a bit and thought it might was feed it in some prompts for our, for our um, designing our website. So instead, I just... Um, I will show you here the finished uh, grids they, it sent me for various prompts. And you can find these prompts around the web. Um, you know, um, just look up uh, websites. I'm really impressed actually here with the logo. I mean, they look like real shoes and stuff like that. So I'll just show you. I've got a couple um, here. So that's with that prompt. Oh, sorry. Here's a story. Can't forget that. Get out of there. Sorry. Oh, there we go. So the first, okay, sorry, I was rushing at the slides a wee bit. Um, this 
I had to change it to strawberry sneakers because it kept giving me these. And I think it's kind of sexist because where are the ladies' shoes or the women's shoes, I should say. Okay, here's another one. Um, that was kind of with these. I like that. They're co cool. Very Wes Anderson. Um, this is just something I picked from the web. Um, it had Nike in it, so I don't really like that, but it, it was too late by the time I generated it. So again, something different. Um, and then I got a variation the way you can do a V. I got a variation on the um, on one of those. So that just gave me different colors. Um, another minimalistic one, um, retro clean design. Quite nice. And I like this because it's colorful. And then you just say colorful, vibrant landing page. Oops, sorry. So that's kind of cool. And then this final one, I said, oh, no, that's not the final one. So I like the colors warm theme. And this one um, was kind of interesting. So a clear and intuitive navigation structure, a clean, non-cluttered layout, fast load time, optimized images. Like there, I said, uh, search bar, accessible, easy to read text, clear call to action. So I put calls to action. Um, and then they're showing me the um, the menus when they drop down. Oops, sorry. So that's the end of that. How are we doing? Great. Um, I do want to say just one thing about uh, this is something that's not really got anything to do with my talk. It's just a tweet that I saw during the week. And um, so these are the main um, image generating models. Um, Mid Journey, Dali. Dali is is Google's, no, DALI is Microsoft's one. Um, Stable Diffusion is its own thing, and you can run that actually on your own computer if you have a, a graphics card. And then Fire, Adobe Firefly is a new uh, product out by Adobe, and what they're saying is um, you can use all of our images confidently. We won't, You won't get sued like you might if you're using um, uh, Midjourney because these are all our stock images. So it's trained on all of their images. So it's very uh, safe to use commercially. So when I first looked at these, I was like looking at the Dali and the Firefly and I was like, Ugh. and I'm like, then I looked again and they're all lovely girls. Like they're, they're beautiful skin and symmetrical and everything, but they're just so real compared to these stunning airbrushed you know things that we're getting but I mean the thing is it's supposed to be natural anyway I don't know how I feel about it I feel weird about it and um but I mean it's just like post you know billboards for years <laughs> anyway brave new world out there what else uh one last thing oh yes okay so contrary to what it says on my resume I do not know Drupal I did years ago like seven version seven <laughs> ask me anything um, but I know I have to move with the times uh, if I want to be an honest person and um, update my, oh, wait, before I do that, sorry, uh, let me just, can you guys see that? Can you see the, um, I've come out of the, just give me a thumbs yes. up. Yes. Okay, super. So you can see this. These are some resources. Okay. Sorry, before I move on. This is amazing. Like, uh, it, just click on any link here and you will just see you know, the coolest kind of art. So I'll put that um, on the slides. And um, there's also kind of a prompt, you know, you can say, well, it's actually a bit out of date. And then there's another one, which it's on GitHub and it has the most of everything you could ever want. Like it's too much to go into, but um, it's a magnificent resource and you can go back over all the previous versions. Okay. Brilliant. So as I said, contrary to what I said on my resume, I don't know it, but I asked ChatGPT to walk me through an installation. Now, bear in mind, ChatGPT does not know about version 10, but it just said the latest version and I did the latest version and, it, you know, it was um, pretty painless. I encountered a few problems. And then I was like, well, how, what can I do to incorporate ChatGPT? And I found out there is an open AI, um, which will do these things for you. I'm like, oh, cool. Okay, I'll try that. How do you do that? So I 
I set up, I, my, my Drupal site is local. I just couldn't be bothered putting it up. So I kind of ran into a few issues, but I did follow this blog uh, posting like this. And lo and behold, I was able to, here's my, here's my, um, here's my website that I made. And I'm going to edit it. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to select this text here. And I'm going to click on my open AI. Uh, button and I'm going to say adjust tone voice. It's going to ask me what do I want it's an adjective. I want it to be mean. <laughs> and submitting it. Oops, did it do that? It didn't. Oh yeah, embarrassing. No, it is. It did do it. It changed it. We're dedicating to you with the subpar footwear. Okay, so that's great. Thank you. Uh, let's just reverse that. Um. Now let's do something else. Let's translate it into Icelandic. Icelandic is the second language of ChatGPT. The Icelandic government made a big um, delegation to, um, to get it to preserve their language. And there's a ton of text having been um, scanned and it can speak Icelandic. Um, summarize, we we'll summarize it. You know, you, you guys get it. Oh, one minute to go. Um, so there you have it. I will end. Let me just see if there's anything I forgot. Probably did, but too late now. And I will move out of sharing my screen. And if anyone has any questions, I'm ready to ask ChatGPT. I have a question, Deirdre. Yes. So I have installed Auto G GPT on my desktop. Wasn't yes. very difficult. And then I did probably what you had to do for your, your Drupal installation, which is you go get a key. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that gets you around the 25 prompt per three hour limit because mm. now it's charging you per. So if anyone bumps into that, you can can get your own key with some of these tools and then you don't have that limit of 25 prompts per hour um but i'm wondering what i haven't looked into yet that you might have looked into is can you run on a reasonably beefy laptop like let's say a modern macbook pro are there any trained models that i can actually install on my like so, so i don't have to worry about my private information getting out there that's what i'm interested oh, okay. in well let's ask chat gpt okay all right let's see what it says but the problem okay. with chat gpt it's only trained until september of 2021 well i could put on my um my uh out to the web with you um um whatever setting okay let me share my screen again here we go back into the wilderness okay what would you like me to ask it is there a large language model that can be run completely on a personal laptop. Please, I should say, <laughs> please tell me. Yes, there is. Oh. Master of Laws. All right, that's obviously not what I was asking. <laughs> know thyself, LLM, large language model. As to my knowledge, okay, the cutoff. Now, how can I say, like, go to the web? Can you go to the web for that? Not, chat GPT can't go to the web yet. Well, no, I mean, you might have missed the start of it, but I said you can go to the web. I'm in a beta version. Well, it's not letting me into the beta version, obviously. I'm in, right. I'm in a- oh, I'm sorry, 3.5 can't. Can't you do it with, can't you do it with four? This, okay. As a plus user, you enjoy early access, which allows web browsing. Try a version of chat GPT that knows 
when and how to browse the internet to answer questions about recent topics and events. Ooh, I was okay. hoping to kick that in, but it didn't. Mm -hmm. So it, it I'm afraid it doesn't want to ask because it's like if it knows how and when, right? It doesn't want to ask. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, no, I know. Mm. Well, Bing, I think, is by default connected to the internet, so I'll ask it. Correct. Now, there was a very interesting article uh, in Time magazine sometime I forget when but it's kind of well known and it um it talks about the four things that you should not never do with an AI model it compares it it compares in it to the movie don't look up I have not seen that movie but um I'm sure it's a very apt uh analogy but um the thing that they say is number one don't teach it to code number two don't have a public facing API Number three, don't let it search the web. And number four, don't have an arms race. So we've done all of those now. So just sit back and like watch the end of the world. I'm laughing, but it's true. There's apparently a tool called Uba Uga Text Generation Web UI. Okay. Over, cool. on, over on Tom's hardware well, from March so of this year. This is going you know, to put the link in another there. generation of startups. So anyway, we are almost at time. And um, this was really fascinating. I want to thank you, Deirdre, for coming and presenting here at WebCam. Uh, the sessions will be um, online uh, in a couple days, two weeks, something like that. I'm going to stop recording.